Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So, um, this is part two of the Sherbrooke Salmon Fly. Uh, if you missed part one and you're new to the channel, uh, I suggest you go back a video and check out video number one first. Uh, that'll kind of get you caught up and uh, show you how we got to where we are and uh, all the steps along the way in creating the body and the throat. Um, so now in this video we're going to go through the um, top half of the fly and we're going to basically uh, tie in and install our I just got done watching a mechanics video so of course I've got installs on my brain but we're going to tie in the uh, the upper half of the fly so we're going to start with the underwing which is golden pheasant tippets um, for this fl particular fly I actually chose to go with a um, paler colored tippets. Um, since a lot of this fly is, is, has used um, you know pale lemon silk, uh, pale orange, pale blue, I thought you know it'd be nice to go with some pale tippets. Um, there are different kinds of necks and you can see here there's just a couple examples of the variety and the and the how much they vary in color. Some are very very bright. Uh, this is a natural orange. Um, and then some are more of a paler orange. So you can use that to your advantage uh, with your flies and kind of tailor those to it and kind of make the flies a little bit better. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll take our two golden pheasant feathers, lay them back to back, line them up, make sure that they're uh, the same length, they pair well, the stems uh, are at the same angle. If they don't pair well and they kind of want to just slip and slide all, all over each other then you don't want to have those in your fly. You want to get a nice pair that will actually fit well. Um, what I am going to do here is you see how the feather takes the shape of the fly? It kind of curves. It, it gives the, the barring a little bit of an angle and Sometimes I don't particularly care for that. I prefer to have it like this. But there is no, <laughs> there's no butt in this fly. So being that there's no butt, uh, I'm going to go with it this way. And um, we're going to lay this right down on the fly like so. So to do that, first we'll go through the underside here. And we'll just pull away these little finer pieces. And same thing on top. The top is less important. Um, that's going to get covered up by the wing. Now, we want to see where our tying point is. Alright, so we're close. And what we'll do is just take away a little bit more of the bottom here. That should do it. Let's check that. Okay, we're good. Now what we're going to do is take the, make sure these are lined up well, and right where they tie in, first I want to tie in and just see how they're going to lay. Not too bad actually, I almost might consider even leaving that. Um, sometimes you'll tie it in and they'll sit funny, they'll, they'll pop up, they won't want to comply and you'll need to do a little convincing and manipulating to get them to sit right. However, these almost want to sit just like I want them to. Right out of the gate. I'm going to give them a slight little bend with my thumb. There we go. 
and that slight little bend with, that I put in there gives that the rest of the curve it needs to sit right down on the shank of the hook. I like that, that looks rather nice. Okay, so we want to get these a little bit more secure so they're not wobbling all over here. You can, uh, at this point if you like, you can drop a little bit of Sally Henson's there. Um, I am actually not going to. I'm going to use a little bit of wax. And the wax up front here should, uh, should give me that little bit of stick that I need to keep them in place. Just a little bit, we don't need too much. Just want to change the color of the thread. Looking down from the top, see that's pretty good. Okay, use our razor scissors here, cut off those, get them right up out of the way. Make sure you've got very sharp scissors if you're going to do that. Um, I've used not so sharp scissors before and they wind up rolling the feathers all over. Alright, now we're going to take our wing. And I haven't removed any parts from it yet. I want to see what it looks like. Maybe I can get away with it. Boy, that's a thick wing. Yep, I'm going to remove a couple of uh, colors. I'll be right back with you. Alright, so I've got the wing all set. And it's much better, much more proportionate. Alright, so to set the wing on here, I'm sure we've got a nice bend in the wing. Um, let me move a little bit more here. I'm not getting this in the camera. Okay. I think that's a little bit better. Alright. Yes. So now I've got a much better shape to my wing. Let's make sure these are lined up properly. Uh, front to back here. You can see. That rear wing's not quite even with the front one. There we go. All 
there. So we've got the nice shape to it now. We'll make sure that our our tips are at the angle that we'd like. Make sure they're aligned front to back properly. I'm not quite happy with the wing shape. This is the rear wing. See how it comes to a really pronounced point. I really like to adjust that a little bit. So as I was talking about before, all it takes is just moving a few of these around a little bit. And you can shuffle them. And what I'm doing now, apologies, I gotta do this off camera. Because I'm actually separating the orange and the blue and um, repositioning those just a little. Alright, much better. And now as I said, I'm just sliding these along each other to change the angle. And now the front one as you can see is a little bit different as well it's kind of squared off right here so we're going to adjust those but I also noticed right here this piece of golden pheasant tail is broken so I'm just going to take that one off That one slip won't affect the fly. So now with that curve that it's got in it, we're going to take that and line it up where we want it, which is about, you want to have it so that way the tip of your wing is going to meet the tip of your tail. If you straighten them out, as you can see, that's about what we've got. So I think the wing is about where we want it. So next you want to take your left hand and hold firm with your left hand and then use your right hand to help collapse these feathers a little. You're going to collapse them down and kind of give them a little bit of a bend. bit of a bend like that. And that'll just help your thread find its place. Put the one wrap of thread over it. Again, give it its little bend and let the weight of the bobbin pull down on the thread on the wing. Do a second wrap. Kind of adjust it a little. And then you can start to pull a little bit. If it starts to roll, stop, pull it back. Pull a little more, roll it back. And then we'll do another wrap. And we'll do this three or four times. When you're not getting any more give to your wing, that's about when you've got good enough tension on it. And you can let off and then make your adjustments and check and see where you're at. So right now, this underwing is very big. So it's pushing that wing up in the air. So what I want to do is get down in between the wing... and get that tippet to come through the top of the wing. Tweezers.
And once we've got it sticking out the top of the wing, we can start making our adjustments, pull the wing down more towards the tail. And then we'll be able to remove part of that underwing. Now to remove part of the underwing, very carefully and slowly, with your scissors down between the wings, you can start snipping away. Just snip away some of those fibers in there. As long as you're gentle with it and you take your time, you can do it all without damaging anything. You know those fibers to fall out of there. Now I'm only having an issue with my tail lining up properly, of course. Okay, now we've got our wing on. And as you can see, it comes down and meets the tail. The tail has a nice curve to it. Everything's been adjusted. And in line with one another. This wing is a little on the heavy side still, I think. I even think I could probably pull more out of that underwing. But I think that's a pretty good pretty good looking wing, pretty good wing set. And this side is there's a little bit of a fold here that I'm not particularly pleased about. Let's see if I can fix that just a little bit. The blue slipped out from between the red and the orange. And the red went over the top of the blue. To have a proper hook, uh, hook set, wing set, they all must accordion and stack properly like this side just was. Now you can actually see where I've cut away the, the wing. It looks terrible this way, but once you put the main wing back on over, the, over that underwing, you'll never notice it. And even in a fishing fly, it doesn't affect the fly. I'm just readjusting here 
right at the tie-in point where it all kind of fell apart. I'm just realigning all of this and remarrying it all, making sure that it's all ready to go. And then of course I have to real realign the other one as well, the near side. Just make sure that they're not falling apart. Okay, so once again we get it where we want, the tip of the wing meeting the tip of the tail. We'll hold that in place. Of course the thread is going to compress a little bit easier or the wing is going to compress a little easier this time. Which could play in your favor, or it might not. I'm about to find out. So the other side was perfect, and this side accordion didn't accordion quite right. Come on now, don't fight me. Not sure if you guys can see it. Right here. That little bit. Remember that orange, yellow, and blue meat right here. I think I'm going to leave that. It's not terrible. I can hear a couple of you already. Something is up with this underwing and I don't like it.
wheel. Now I'm going to try to tie this in just as it was without really changing anything. This golden pheasant on top may need to be replaced though. If I make this sit right, it'll be amazing. Just trying to realign the, the barbs again, but I have a feeling these wings are going to have to get rebuilt. I'm going to have one more try at this and then... I'm going to pull this off in one more try. I am going to have to go and rebuild these wings. They're a little... They're getting kind of beat. I wish I could show you what I'm doing, but I, I can't move the camera. And to do this with my hands in front of the camera is just, uh, I wouldn't be able to do it. There's not enough room. Okay. Get everything positioned so the tip meets the tail just like we want it. That's too bad. Whole top half of the back side folded in. All the brown material folded down over the, the colored material. That's it right there.
All right, I'm going to leave that. That is good. And that is definitely going to get a drop of some Sally Hansen's to hold that in place. I'm going to put that right into the right into the little crook right here. I'm going to let that set up for a few minutes, and I'll prep the uh, the next step, which is the wood duck. And well, it's supposed to be pintail, but all the pintail that I have is much smaller, so it'll be wood duck and. Um, teal. I'll have to uh, call an audible here and use some some green wing teal. <coughs> All right. So now when you're prepping your feathers, your teal and your wood duck. You're going to decide where you're going to take it from. Where on the feather. And in this case I'm going to take it from this upper part right here. So we're going to use our scissors and cut. Well first we'll pull away this other side. We're not going to use that. And then we'll just cut right here. And we're going to keep and use about that. And then we'll pick the same amount on the opposite side, opposite feather. And we'll do the same thing, snip away what we're not going to use. Or at least what we're not going to use on this fly. And then once again, we'll come into here. Pick out our strip. It's a little thicker than the other side, I think, but uh, we can change that here momentarily. Same thing with the wood duck. We'll come into the wood duck feather and right down here, we'll clip that away. And then the barred part that we're going to use is up here. So we strip away all of the other side here. And the uh, barred part here. We'll clip out a nice section of it. And we'll do the same with the other feather. Figure out about what we're going to use. Clip that out. That's definitely way too much, but uh, we can thin that out. Okay, so for this side, we're going to use the wood duck feather that has the angle matching the tail. Alright, so the left side will be the near side. I'm going to make this just a little bit thinner of a strip. And now what we can do is hold this stem here and the more we rotate this stem right here the more it changes the angle over here so the more we spin this over here like this the more this angle changes and that's what we're going to use to put on the side of the fly And now when we marry our teal to it, the teal is the same. 
and teal, we're going to be using this, the slip you took from the left side of the rackets for the near side. Now, I like to put the teal below the wood duck. Um, you can put it above the wood duck if you like, however you choose. That's perfectly up to you. I like it to look somewhat like this. And then when we tie it in, we just change the angle of it a little bit here. I'm going to lay it on there, and I like to just throw one wrap on there, just to see how it's going to fit. And that's a pretty hardy slab of wood duck and teal. And I think that teal can thin out a bit. Possibly even the wood duck a little more as well. Don't need to have huge slabs of duck on there. Though they don't specify in the books how much to put, so that is up to the tire's discretion. And I do think that uh, you, know, you can doctor that however you like and interpret it the way you want. That's kind of the beauty of it. I think there is a core um, certain way of doing it like now okay so now we've got our teal and our wood duck we'll lay those up on the side give it one just one rat to hold it in place okay, easy and just use our just use our needle to kind of fiddle it into place. And that's effectively how you get your sides onto your fly. So now we'll flip. And we'll go to the opposite side, and I'll back up so you can see this. And here. Now we're using the opposite slip. Uh, I'm going to alter these a little bit since I thin the other ones out. I'll thin these ones out as well. And again, we'll take the wood duck. We're going to take it and just change the angle on the end by rotating this. You see that? And you're sliding these pieces. And as you slide them, you can change that angle. Let's get our teal. And you take the teal and just marry it to the underside of the wood duck. And just line them up, just like you would with the turkey or anything else. And then just kind of work them into place, and they should go right together for you. Just be gentle, there's no reason to be rough with it. And now you can see there, you've got these together. And then you want to pull these tight and keep this nice and firm so that way the other end uh, stays where you want it. Now you take the wood duck and turn it and pull it tight so that way it thins out. See how that's thinning out? Right here they're all compressing down. And then same thing with the teal. It'll all compress down together. 
creating a kind of curve right here. And that's how you can lay that down onto the hook, onto the wing. Lay that down there. Hold it with your pointer or your left hand or your right if you're left-handed. And then just do one loop on that. And then a second. The far side you need a second loop to hold it in place, otherwise it'll come off. And then this side's going to be a little bit more difficult. This side's always more difficult. This hackle right here always plays a part. Make sure your wing is set correctly. <coughs> And that you're not tying in over hackle. And that hackle will mess you right up. It creates a lump that you're that will actually push your your sides and everything outward. There we go. Shorten that up a little. That's no good. What you gotta do is make sure these are at their thinnest point here. Create this little bend here and lay them on. side is always the tricky one. There we go. And just use your tweezers to get it. Just about off over that hackle. There we go. This side hold. Yes. Now it's too short. Oh. I need my fingers to pull it. Okay, there we go. Now we have some alignment issues with some other things, so we'll just have to get some things set back into place. That's good over here. Okay. Now I move on to the bronze mallard roof. Hopefully these mallard feathers I've chosen have are long enough. Oh yeah. Uh, well, we're about to find out. So just like you did with your sides, you're going to take the bronze mallard and right down where all this fluff is, you can get rid of it. You can clip it away, you can cut it away, whatever you'd like to do. And then strip away down here. Uh, this other stuff on the other side, the shorter material, you're not going to use that very much. Um, now when you get up into your into the feather, you can decide how long of a, how big of a roof do you want? 
Um, from what I'm seeing, this is going to be close. I think I might need larger bronze mallard feathers. The choice of your feather is rather important. Um, just like any of your other feathers uh, in your fly, if your bronze mallard feather is not the proper length, the proper color for the fly, um, there's a lot of different vari variables. All right, and that'll be that side. And then that'll be the opposite. All right, so these, as I said, we're we're going to cut away some of these. So we'll get down into here where it's a bit shorter. We're probably not going to use that. Um, I'll save that and use that on smaller flies. I'll be doing some smaller uh, Irish style flies later in the year. I'm still kind of learning the ropes on those. So I'd rather know what I'm doing before I bring it up to you guys. But this has a nice color. The tips are nice and even. So we'll cut away, just like we did on the other side, with, with or just like we did with the uh, wood duck and the teal. We'll just cut away a slip. Keep the rack is still attached. And that's for the far side, so we'll keep that. Set that aside. And now for this side... I want to get this down a little lower if I can. Right. Now my now for the roof, you can do these both uh, at the same time. And to do that, hang on, I'm going to use a different feather for the near side. I didn't like that one. Yep, I'm being quite picky about it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, though, I, I suppose. I think this will work better. Apologize for the weight. Sometimes it's how it goes though. We're just not happy with it, we're just not happy with it. Alright, so for the near side, we've got our roof here. And as you can see, we want it to sit about like that. So we can do it one at a time, we can do it both at the same time. Both at the same time is not quite my strong suit, but I'm going to give it a go for you guys. And then we'll just 
just a little bit thinner on these. Okay, so I'm actually going to cut away most of what's up front here. I don't recommend doing them all at once without very sharp scissors. Typically I recommend you do it a little at a time. Just take a little chunk at a time. And by getting this out of the way, it'll make it much easier for you to tie things in, like your roof and your topping. You can get all that snipped. You can clean up the rest later. It's just getting most of that out of the way. Okay, so back to the roof. To do them both at the same time, you line them up with the narrow parts together. And then you're going to lay them over it. Ooh, they reversed. And lay it over the front. And then just pinch them together like that. And once you pinch them like that, you make a loose wrap. And then another. And kind of align them if you need to. There you go. Other side's on there pretty good as well. They both kind of went on nice and easy. Then you can bring your wood duck and your teal down a little bit into sight more. And then you can do a drop of Sally Hansen's. Um, to do them one at a time, uh, you can typically tie on the front side. Let's go ahead and do that for you. Since we're here, let's do it. To do it one at a time, though, is actually going to use more thread wraps. So to keep your head down a little bit, um, I recommend doing it as few thread wraps as possible. So what you can do is hold, put it, put your rear one on first, do a thread wrap, position it. Second, you're going to need a second wrap for that far side. But if you're going to do the front side, you can use the front side as your second wrap. So right now it's looped on there, and if you go back, that's going to loosen that up, and this will fall right out. We don't need that. So you got to pay attention to that. Let's get that back on there. Now look at the angle that it's at when I've got it on there. You want that what that mallard to ride right along the roof and use that curve when you tie it in. Now remember, we've only got that half a wrap on there right now. So get the other one ready, near side. And then when you rotate your vise, you're gonna have to pinch that other side with your finger line this one up on here and then make your your second wrap and then you can make your adjustments to both your roofs and your sides and all of that
The other way you can do it is tying on the near side first. So we'll take your near side one, take the rackets, and bend the feather as much as you can. Give it a nice, nice curved shape, almost like a boomerang shape if you can. It nice and curved. Lay it right up on there to match. It matches the curve of the wing on the fly. And do one wrap. Now you'll take your opposite side. Hold that on there. Make sure that's got that same curve. Curve of the wing. Lay it on there. Do one wrap. Couple slight adjustments. And then remember you have to do a second wrap to tighten that down. And you'll have your roof on that way. I'm going to go back to the first method and do it both at the same time as that had the least amount of thread wraps. And I really like the way that looked. <coughs> Hopefully these are still wanting to cooperate with me and uh, I'm willing to do that. So again, we'll hold them up there like, hold them together, the narrow sides touching, side by side. Make sure you've lined up these tips so they're the same length. Lay them over the top of the fly. Oh no. And then pinch down, pinching them on both sides of the fly. And then make your two wraps. That way it leaves a bit of a cleaner look to it, I think. Hmm. This um, far side didn't take very good. That's better. And now we just go back and make our adjustments. With that hack, I'll get it out of the way. <clears throat> All right. There are no sides or cheeks or anything like that. There is just a topping and horns. So for the topping, I've got a nice one here. Oh, well, that's too bad. I just happened to notice the uh, the tips on this are broken. So you can see here, that is no good. I will be selecting another one. I'll be right back with you. All right, so one more adjustment here. 
there. So I've got my topping all chosen. And I went through and I did a little bit of uh, modifying to it. And I bent the stem where the rack is where I want it. And you see all these little pieces that are sticking out. That's kind of a good way to know which ones to clip and which ones not to. So we're just going to clip these nice and short right down to the stem here. And now you can see We'd have to do a little bit more convincing here, but we're about, we're pretty close to where I want it to be. Meets up with the tail and the tip of the wing. Also curves and follows the shape of the wing. So now I just want to use my tweezers and right here where my tie-in point is, I'm just going to bend that a little more. Make sure that's more pronounced. Oh, here comes the dogs. And we'll just shorten around it. It would be dinner time in the Lamont household. So, don't mind any dinner noises. <clears throat> Alright, so, right down here by the head, I wanted a little more curvature right here. It should sit right on there like that. That means it needs needs more angle here by the tie-in point. If it's being drawn down too much, that's a bit better. I don't like that either. So now I want to straighten out the main stem more. See if we can set that right in there like that. Getting closer.
I'm just kind of fiddling with it right now, trying to get this to sit, trying to see if I can achieve the shape and look that I want. That's pretty good. I like that. I can adjust these other sides here. Just use your needle. Pull them into place. Very nice. Alright, so next... <clears throat> or lastly, I should say, would be the horns. The horns are blue and gold macaw. So we'll be looking at length. I think those will be good. We're just using the single barb from blue and gold macaw tail. One from each side. And then we'll just take these and tie these on as well. So when you're tying these on, you can see that there's a blue and yellow. You want the blue to sit riding on the on the top and the yellow facing down. They'll tie in nicely that way. Should almost just sit right on there willingly. I'm going to the far side so that needs a second wrap. And as you can see, this went on rather nice. So now we will. And with another little bit of Sally Henson's here, I'm going to try to keep more towards the front of the tie-in. So it doesn't bleed up into the feathers too bad in the wing. And the rest, and we'll just clip away the rest in the front here after this dries. Once that dries, I'll be back to uh, finish up the head on this beautiful fly. All right. So here we are, I'm going to go uh, work on the head here, so I'm going to move you guys in a little. Hopefully you're able to see that well enough. Well, technically it's supposed to be a black head with black thread, so... I'm going to uh, tie in some black thread. Over the top of the white. And technically I don't really have to do that. I could just use my varnishes. I'm not going to. I'm just going to use the black thread. Alright, so now using a fresh razor blade, we're going to cut down through the rest of this. I feel that topping moving.
Now one thing you got to remember, if you choose to go with horsehair for your eye, horsehair is quite delicate when it comes to razor blades. So you don't want to be just hacking away at it. Get more delicate around the head. Just use a fresh razor blade. Make sure everything's still sitting the way we want it. And the topping has shifted. Okay. Only slightly. Next, I'm going to use my thread zap. Melt away, burn away the rest of these little feather pieces. This side here. Again, you want to be careful of your horse hair, that will burn very easily. I mean, gut, gut will as well, but horse hair will burn quite easily in comparison. Once you've got that all set, I'm going to use some wax to I'm use a little bit of wax for the head. So what I'm going to do first is get that hackle out of the way. So I've used a lighter to heat up the wax on the, uh, to heat up the ball of wax rather, on the side. And then we're going to take that, heavily coat the thread. And then we're going to start wrapping. And little by little, working our way across the head, towards the front. I know this is not everybody's way of doing it. But it's a method that has worked very well for me. And it's gotten me fantastic results and really nice looking heads. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a few out there that would cringe at this. That's okay. Everybody's got their own special way of doing things. Just 
you got a good bit on there that holds your thread in place, you can do a whip finish. Or you can wait till your wax covers a spot that uh, secures the thread. And you can just cut your thread at that point, um, which is probably what I'll do here. Uh, if this was a fishing fly, I wouldn't do that. But this is not a fishing fly. So I'm not going to. Take a little bit of wax on the end of my needle. some around the head. And while that's soft, you can use your finger and kind of mold it. Places like my house is just are cold. You can actually use something like this. Use your cauterizer. And I'll transfer the heat to it, warm it up a bit, and you can take that and continue holding. The batteries are dying in that thing again, I may need to get a new one. So instead we'll heat up a needle. In this case here, you just heat up the needle nice and warm. And just use that to spread around the wax. At this point now we can go ahead and cut our thread. Very much gonna need to give my scissors some attention. Once you've got the head the way you want it, the size you want it, and you've got your wax melted to the point that it's created the ideal size, then you can go ahead and we'll add a little bit of clear lacquer to it first. As you can see, I've already gotten wax into the hackle. I do not want to do that. Good. 
And we're going to use a little bit of clear Solaire varnish first. I'm using clear first. Um, because the black can bleed into the hackle and especially into the um, horsehair eye. I've noticed that Solaire will leach into that very, very easily. So we're going to use a coat of clear, and then I will do a coat of black later for the photos. That'll create a nice coat on there. And our completed Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke salmon fly. Come back for some final, a final look at the fly. <clears throat> Quite satisfied with this. One more, well, two more coats maybe on the head, and that'll be ready for a frame. There you are. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. Uh, leave it, a, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing to the channel. I'm going to have a whole bunch of new stuff coming out. Uh, this week, um, I've got this video. And then I've got a couple that I'm going to make out of this video that are going to be a little bit more... They'll be shorts, I suppose. Uh, you can check those out. Those will be a little bit more along just the uh, doing the body and doing the sides. Um, but I'm going to have another video coming out this week about uh, some different waxes. I've got a couple different waxes that I use. i got a new one that I just got and I want to try out. So I'll be doing a review on that, along with some other materials that I've gotten recently. And um, some more information about giveaways. So uh, stay tuned for that and keep your post notifications on. Till the next video, everyone. Tight lines. Take care.